Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the latest episode in Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. I forgot to do the dance, I'm sorry. So, this month, I actually have two books I'm going to talk to you about. So the first one is Salvage, a ghost story by Duncan Ralston. I actually know Duncan Ralston through uh, a publisher called Book Trope. We were both, uh, my book, No Rest for the Wicked, and a few of his were published by Forsaken, which was the horror imprint of Book Trope. Book Trope's no longer around now, so I assume he's either, he's either self-publishing or with an indie press. He's a very good horror writer, though. I've, um... He's one of the few from those days who I still read all of their books, you know, or at least I'm trying to. I'm going to read you the blurb. Something is lurking under the lake. Struggling with the death of his sister, Owen Sadler becomes obsessed with the lake that claimed her life and the ghost town submerged beneath the water. Thirty years earlier, Peace Falls had been flooded to build a hydroelectric dam and its ruins remain below the surface of Chapel Lake. The strange disappearance of the town pastor, along with many of the parishioners, still haunts the citizens of Chapel Lake, but does the church haunt the lake itself? Is Owen really seeing ghosts, or has he descended into the depths of madness? And so basically what happens in this story is that um, Owen's sister died in this lake, she was diving in there, and so he decides to try and follow in her footsteps and to kind of understand what was happening. To begin with, I wasn't too impressed with the characterization, but it, they certainly grow on you throughout. Uh, by the end of it, they do feel they feel like a family, you know. And um, well, they are a family, and you you learn the family secrets and all of this stuff. And it's an interesting case of a book where, at the start, I just wasn't at all invested in the characters, and by the end, just through their character development, through the story, you know, and through the way information is revealed to you. I got really into them. I really wanted to know what happened. First off, there's this little line, which is my life now. So, um, uh, so uh, Owen goes, he's talking to this guy and he says, We met at Laurie's 20th. You're the diver, right? Did we? Hansen said absently. Yes, diving is one of my passions. He gestured toward one of the snacks on the table. Are these vegan, do you think? He answered his own question with a shake of his head. Best not to risk it. Yeah, that's what I've been doing recently. But then I did that when I was vegetarian as well, because I never know what people put in food. People put ridiculous stuff into food. We have here, Owen is talking to Avery here, his uh, business partner, and he says, I don't want to grieve. Nobody does, Owen, she said. He saw sympathy in Avery's eyes, revealing an emotional side she'd kept hidden from him in the 11 years they'd been partners. If people did, they'd call it something else. We do have something, a little bit, there's like a relationship in it, which does feel a little bit insta-lovey. Uh, especially because, spoiler alert, she dies as well, so so they have like two days, he knows her for two days and then she dies and then he's really upset, mm, I don't know. We have uh, a reference to Donald Trump as well, which is weird because I just read American Psycho, which was full of references to Trump, and also they call it in the little village, they call it refuse rather than trash, and I'm sure... Maybe I'm wrong because it wasn't on that page, but I'm sure I read a mention somewhere that that's because it's the British way of naming it. But we wouldn't call it refuse, we just call it rubbish. You know, Americans call it trash, we call it rubbish. So I don't know, maybe refuse is a Canadian thing because this is set in Canada. It could be a French Canadian thing, maybe. Oh, we have this moment where uh, he almost. He almost drowns under the water as well, and uh, somebody somebody saves him. So we have here, she wedged the regulator into his mouth. He felt his lungs fill with precious air, not with death, but life. She took the air away, this woman he didn't know, his saviour, and gave him a brief, apologetic smile before yanking him up, up toward the sky, toward air, toward life. They broke the surface between the steeple and a large orange boy, and he gasped for air that had never tasted so sweet. She dragged him to the dock, grunting as she swam until he was able to use his own arms. She helped him up onto the dock, the two of them groaning from the effort. He doubled over suddenly, every single inch of him seizing in excruciating pain, and puked up everything still in his guts from that morning. And so I wondered whether that's like a pressurisation thing, because that does happen, doesn't it, to divers when they go from too low to too high and come up above the water and they need to reacclimatize. But it wasn't explicitly spelled out, but I thought it was a nice little touch, because I'm sure that probably would happen in that situation. I think as well, the fact that a lot of this takes place underwater and there are ghosts underwater, I mean, I don't know, expanses of water are one of the things that creep me out. That and space, like, because they're just big and they're pretty much designed to kill you, you know? I think that's all I'm going to say about this one, but uh, yeah, I did enjoy it. I will give it a 4 out of 5, and if it sounds like your cup of tea, definitely check it out. 
Book number two, I actually read this at the tail end of last month. I'm just going to give a quick shout out here. This is Bobs and Virgin by Cam C. Wolf. Cam is behind Wolf Shop Publishing here on Booktube. And this is basically a parody on Milk and Honey. I'm going to read you the blurb. This is the uncapitalized journey of thirsty Instagrammers working tirelessly to make girls show their bobs and vagine. This is a collection of the lust, the anger, the butts, the bobs. This is actually pretty sad and gross and just a little bit funny. So I'm gonna read you just a couple of these. I, I did enjoy it, it made me laugh. It's got some nice illustrations as well. Like, I wanna smoke your right boob. Licking something wet is good for my big guns. Love you, babe. If I could use that ass as a pillow, I don't think I'd ever get up. Here is one by Gimme Them Toes. I want to smell her soft, smooth feet after her two-hour vigorous Zumba workout. Run, jog, or hike in Ugg boots with no socks on a hot 100-degree summer day. When I slide them boots off, I hope them feet are really hot, steamy, musty, rank, rancid, sour, stinking, sweaty. And I'll rub her slimy, icky, sticky, gooey, moist, buttery, cheesy, creamy, clammy, toe jammy, gravy, foot sweat all on my face while I smell her funky, corn, chippy, smelly feet and suck her delicious toes. I can report you for nudity unless you send a nude of yourself. You have 24 hours. Your bobs are huge. In this pic, she have boobs. Excuse me, miss. Would you be kind enough to help me lose my virginity? Baby girl, you're so gorgeous. I'd literally trap all your farts in a resealable jar and take mini whiffs throughout the day to keep me going. Something's rising and it ain't Jesus. I would kick my mama in the head while she sleep just to eat that ass. Wow, <laughs> it's pretty funny. This is another four out of five. I mean, it's not a serious book, but uh, if you like some good satire slash parody in the form of Instagram comments that have been turned into found poems, here you go. And it's pretty cheap as well. I can't remember how much I paid for it, but not much. Like four pound or something, five pound maybe. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, that's what I read this month. Next month, I am going to be reading another two books. I'm going to be reading Fortune Box by Madeline Swan. And I am going to also read Indisputably Doris, which is book number two from Charles Heathcote in the R. Doris series. So I'm looking forward to both of those. R. Doris was actually one of my books of Q2, my top books of Q2. So I'm looking forward to continuing it. And uh, yeah, Todd and I will be posting our videos, I think we said on Thursday the 30th of August. So if you want to join in, you've got until Thursday the 30th of August to read as many, as many uh, indie books or self-published books as you want to. Hint, Todd and I both have books available that you could buy. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> oh excuse me. I think that's about time for me to do my sign off. On that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read either of these books, or if not, uh, whether you will be, whether you'll be joining in with the Indie Read Along. Hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.